Um, I think basically for two reasons. <clears throat> the first one is because um, neuroscience is uh, right now in the core of uh, all the biological research. Um, the second one is because um, the study of neuroscience and freedom is, um, is, a, is a very good example for looking at the paradox of, of one of the more clear paradox of, of modernity. On one hand, uh, mm, neuroscientists, or at least some neuroscientists, are telling us that um, we are not free. Basically, our freedom is an illusion because uh, our brain is doing the whole thing. But at the same time, on the other hand, um, uh, we do act in our lives as if we have freedom, especially in social and personal matters. So basically, the study of neuroscience and freedom is a, is a good window to look at this particular paradox of the study of modernity. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult question. I, mean, I think neuroscience right now is uh, split in two um, main areas of research. On one hand, neuroscience is uh, very much looking at the genes and the development of cellular biology, really. And in that particular uh, field, uh, neuroscience is very much uh, together with other, uh, with this, with the molecular genetics um, and with cellular biology and all these things. But there is another area uh, that has been uh, grown in the last few years enormously, which is uh, system neuroscience, or that is very much associated with neuroimaging. And for this particular area of research, that incidentally has been associated also with uh, psychiatry, is uh, the most important question in neuroscience is to understand how our brains are working as a whole. So trying to answer a very, very, very um, uh, deep question as uh, uh, who we are, um, how is our self-consciousness, how self-consciousness develop really, and um, all these types of, of, of questions, which are, I think, fundamental for knowing uh, how um, a human being really act. Although there are not many studies on uh, the impact of neuroscience on religion, uh, lately, there have been a number of uh, studies um, looking at the impact of religion in the brain. And for, from what I recall, some of the studies, and especially uh, how I have in mind right now, um, one study made in Oxford University uh, a couple of years ago, one or two years ago, um, uh, the idea of religion, uh, exploring religion uh, on the brain, is interesting because uh, we uh, have seen somehow another paradox of a study the brain. We usually think uh, the uh, brain and the neuron imaging studies as sort of causal. So basically, if uh, you check a paradigm in the brain, uh, let's say um, uh, a study of, you know, um, how the brain works in uh, meditation or something, uh, and you see areas of the brain uh, which are activated when you do that particular paradigm. So you, you, you are tempted to think that there is a causal relationship between the uh, paradigm that you are exploring and uh, the brain, the activation of the brain areas that you are seeing and uh, actually with the neuroimaging. But you can see the other way around. That means that uh, somehow our lives and religion is part of our lives um, are, is, are, 
somehow engraving in our brains that particular life. You see, um, something like um, um, it's, uh, a, it's a kind of biological underpinning of what's going on around us, uh, living our personal life, which is very much interesting because it's a real union between um, biology and, and, and our uh, more, uh, you see, more uh, personal uh, way of doing things, you see.